Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's time to see what the national dailies are saying in today's headlines. We're going to be looking at Off the Press, but joining us to review the papers this morning is Jide Johnson. He's the Chief Lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism, and he'll be joining us here in Lagos State. Good morning, Mr. Johnson. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Good morning, Anna. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year to you. Hello, sir. Yeah, good morning. Good morning for having me. And happy new year to all our viewers all over the world. It's a pleasure to be with you again. Yes. Thank you so much. All right, let's go into the papers. And today we'll be starting with The Guardian. Now, there is a major headline that is screaming at everyone. And it says, EFCC probes NSIPA beneficiaries in alleged forex allocation abuse. Now, we know that they've even... Um, actually freezed about 40 private accounts with these monies. But I want to know what your thoughts are on this one. Um, NSIPA, we've heard of how they have siphoned monies um, that are meant for projects. But here, EFCC is already probing them and trying to investigate in this matter. What are your take? What's your thoughts on this? My, my take is just very simple. There are um, due diligence process before you take money out of public coffers, the question you ask is um, how those that are meant to raise red flag or those that are meant to ensure that there is compliance with lay down rule and procedure, what did they do? And how do people circumvent these processes? And then why do we even have the Economic Financial Crimes Commission in the first place in Nigeria? It's to prevent that. It's not about it's not about the investigation and prosecution after the crime has, has, has happened. It's it, it is also meant to, to, to ensure that this does not even happen in the first mm -hmm. in the first instance. And, you know, like, like the EFCC, like the Inspector General um, in the American system, which is independent of, of any of the body that can look into the coffers of any government agencies or even individual, 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 individual accounts to ensure that they are compliant with financial regulations and due delay. And then you, our sensitivity will be insulted every day so so so, so case and if it's investigating investigating and then they keep investigating and then we don't see the light of the day concerning the investigation and that will be swept under the carpet another person will comment another crime it will be investigated and uh, our feelings will be will, will be assaulted with with bold deadlines on pages of newspaper to justify whether he is doing something is not doing something but if it's for them to run after those that have committed financial crime in terms of in terms of breaking the 419 code. It's easier for them to do that. It's easier for them to parade them. It's easier for the EFCC chairman to say 95% of, of of university students are 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 are, are, are yow, yow boys, but it's not easy for him to say that 99.9% .9 of the political class are, are, are corrupt. So it's, it's it's unfortunate. You just wonder what what people have done to the commonwealth of this country. You just wonder if we fully manage our resources, where this country will be in the Committee of Nations. It's unfortunate. It's, it's, when any, any time I see such headline and I see the bravado uh, of EFCC and I see them trying to, 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 to portray um, themselves as working in the interest of Nigeria, I see them working in, against the interest of Nigeria. Because in the first instance, you are put in place to ensure that this does not happen. Mm. Why do you always allow this to happen? Is what I can't come to terms with. Yeah, I think I, I think you raised some very valid, val, um, valid points because I I want to believe that if monies are being transferred to a certain account, even before we get to the stage of stealing millions and billions. Um, the banks should actually be alerted. They should see the funds. Sometimes you're just transferring about one million naira and then they freeze your account for about maybe um, some minutes. So if they're sending these huge chunks of money, how come EFCC doesn't see that even before we get to the point of sending out billions from government treasury fund, um, from government treasury? So that is, a, that is a very valid point. But now let's circle it back to the fact that, okay, Nigerian students or people who are doing the yawi yawi in quotes um, are being paraded by EFCC. Would you say that they probably um, protect the politicians? And then does this even impact, like affect the credibility of EFCC as a whole? 
But what do you think the public perception of EFCC is? Mm. The public perception of EFCC. What do you think the public perception? Do people take EFCC as serious as it used to be when the present national security advisor was the, was the chairman of EFCC? The fear of EFCC is the beginning of wisdom for every political class. Mm -hmm. Then compare compare the vibrancy, compare the, the the actions of EFCC then with EFCC now. You just wonder we are we are we, we EFCC is just for drag, and then they do a lot of prosecution on the pages of newspaper without any actual outcome with respect to the prosecution of the investigations they've carried out. Now this is just one one. This is just one, 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 one sector, one sector of the. Hello, sir. Economy sector of the economy. Let's look at they should throw their spotlight on transportation, on what happened during transportation concerning the railway construction, or they threw. The spotlight Nigeria. Uh, goes, you know, more, there are multi, multi agencies that if they turn their spotlight on and they, they come out with, with, with their result, you, you cry for this country. I wonder how this country is still standing on its two, on its two, on its two feet with, with, with all of the, or all of, with all of the bleeding and memory the country is suffering from. I, I just, I just can't imagine. I just, as far as I'm concerned, you ask me for my opinion. How do I take EFCC? I take EFCC as an serious organization because the, the core mandate of EFCC is not to prosecute after the crime has been committed. It's to ensure that this does not happen. And that the major reason why we enjoy their forgiveness, it was one of the conditions that was given then by by the World Bank, the IMF, that Nigeria needs to put in place a system that forestalls corruption. That's why the fact that we have put that system in place, and then you even have due process passed into law in 2006. I, why, uh, I, I can't remember this lady's name. They call her Madame Due Process because she's parted over oh, 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 Obi. Obi, yeah. Obi is a question. Lizzie. Now, mm. you can imagine that despite all this safety guard put in place in the any every operative every director including they should be ashamed of themselves they should because this can't be happening under your watch it can't be happening like you said they have access to every account even if if there's if there's suspected movement of fun into my account or your own account before you say jack robinson the account is freezed once you come and sleep, and then people will be moving billions, 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 and this is not raising any flag. Mm. It's sad. So uh, that means the banks also are complicit because uh, exactly. things like these they should report as well. Yes, but they do not report. Um, is it that the system is such a way that the banks themselves do not understand, or the banks are? Uh, culpable in, in, in what advice is happening exactly. in this corruption scheme. Quote, quote unquote, is an organized crime network. Mm. Quote unquote, it's an organized crime network. Because you see, there is a deal, you, you see that it's like a syndicate. Because it's not possible for you to even move the money into the banks, to move the money out of the bank, to move the money from, from government account into, into the banks, and you move the money from, from government account in the banks into your own bank. Or into private banks, or you move the money outside of Nigeria. You recall um, the, the director that was suspended that said she moved the money because she suspected that um, the minister will use the money for something different, and she has already spent some certain amount. And I put my hand on my head. How is this possible? Are these people talking about money, or do people not even have any fear? Okay, um, let's move to the political matters now as it is. Um, we go to River State. F Fubara's ally withdraws suit against 25 Rivers lawmakers. Uh, this just gives us the impression that the implementation of that agreement, which Nigerians were crying over, is, is beginning. We've seen a his who was legitimately given <coughs> the... Uh, mandate to be the speaker of the uh, River State House of Assembly, resigning, and now he has become the uh, 
uh, chief of staff of the governor. They sued against the people who left the party to another party that should have been removed from office according to the constitution has been withdrawn. So little by little, the provisions of that agreement are being, being implemented. What does that say about the democracy of Nigeria and the rule of law and respect uh, for the rule of law? The fact that you conduct elections and you have periodic elections and then you have um, successions of government and then you have organs of government collect, controlled by elected or selected or rigged or judicially imposed um, candidate does not mean that you, you have a democracy. Um, democracy itself does not equate constitutional republic. Um, what you are talking about is, uh, is having a constitutional republic. Um, when your democracy is not guided by the constitution of your land, then you, you can't call that democracy. It's, it's, it's no longer democracy. As every republic is governed by constitution. But as far as I'm concerned, it's only people that are bothered about the acts and the actions of these players. Um, the reverse case shouldn't surprise anybody in the sense that you have a party that worked against his presidential candidate through and through, and then um, worked for the presidential candidate that eventually won the election. And then, so in reverse, reverse is neither PDP, in the, the it's it's the actors and the players in rivers are all are all in tandem in cahoots with the APC. That's just the reality. And the leader of the APC is the president, and the president has called his um, members of his party, quote unquote, based on my own interpretation of the events. He has called them, and they have gone to sign whatever agreement he has given them directives with respect to what they need to do, and they are trying to implement that. But if, any, if anyone is thinking that, well, you abide by the Constitution, we comply with what the provisions of the Constitution is, I think that um, we, we are just playing to the gallery. You'll be shocked that this year a lot of PDP members, even governors elect, will come to APC. Um, as we are approaching 2027, we might likely have close to about 30, uh, 20 8 to 30 of the governors in the APC. That's the way the political class is. If you study the trend, you look at the trend in 2003, you look at the trend in 2007, and then you look at the trend in in 2014. So uh, you, you, you begin to see, and then you also look at the trend in 2019. In, you remember in two, prior to 20, uh, uh, shortly after 2019 election, uh, uh, the present minister of works decamped uh, the former governor, as governor of Ebony State, the governor of Cross River State also decamped, Matawale too decamped. So it shouldn't surprise anybody. This The political class, what they care about is not about you and I, it's about power. It's about power, it's about their interest, and their interest is only served when they are in position of power. If I begin to mention the names of those that were, that were, that were quote unquote in the spotlight in the last eight years that are not in any position of power, I ask you the question, where are they? So without without access to power, they are they are insignificant. So as a result of that, the political class will always look for ways and means to protect their own interests. Do you know whether in that agreement the the governor has been assured of his second term, that he will get the second term, that he shouldn't worry, he will not be impeached. So it's the one they wrote on paper and they shared with us. The one they shared in the circuit, nobody seems to know anything about it. Because if you see when the fight started and how um, Nigerians um, of different divide were, 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 were taking sides in that fight. If you, if you take sides with the political class, you just, they are chameleon. So they change the color of their skin according to whatever they are close to. So for me, I'm not surprised. Just grab your popcorn. Like I said that time, I said, grab your popcorn, sit by the ringside. Don't put your stick in any in any of the ring, just watch the, the, the fight as it unfolds. All right. Um, so there's a small headline here that says, MAN, um, that's the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria, predicts challenging business year urges federal government to prioritize manufacturing. Um, so uh, 
The Manufacturing Association of Nigeria has even said that there's a lean possibility um, of recovery in, in the third quarter. However, the first two quarters of the year would be quite challenging for Nigerians. And now they are asking us to ensure that we prioritize manufacturing. But we're seeing companies move away from Nigeria. So there are companies like um, the Jubilee Syringe um, Company now that it, he's moving away. We also have JSK that has moved away as well. We're seeing all of these manufacturing companies leaving Nigeria. How can we start to prioritize manufacturing and not just you know, put all our eggs in one basket of the crude? By investing in power, serious investment in power. If you run, if you run a business, even as an SME, you understand the overhead cost that you incur as a result of power. The money you spend on energy, and um, these companies, um, we want they don't have, the, the national grid keep collapsing, and the prices of 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 of, of petroleum products, PMS and diesel keeps keeps rising. So. And what will happen at the end of the day, they have to, they have to add that to their production cost. And production cost will lead to expensive goods and services. And invariably, these goods and services cannot compete with cheaper. It's even cheaper for you to import these things to come and sell it in Nigeria than for you to produce it in Nigeria. And that's why these companies are leaving. So it's important for government to prioritize that. Because if we don't grow a manufacturing sector, it is the growth of our manufacturing sector that strengthens the Naira because we, so we, we save a lot of money we use for foreign exchange because we don't have to import most of the things that we need. But here, even food, we are importing food. So once you make serious investment in the agricultural sector, you are food sufficient and you make available power, your industry begins to grow. And as your industry begins to grow, your economy begins to boom. And as your economy is booming, the strength of your Naira keeps improving comparable to the dollar the cost of living is reduced the standard of living is improved and then the economy becomes it's 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 is the is the abc of economics is the abc is the abc of economics but um we keep saying it saying it saying it over and over and over there are three value chains there are three value chains and i've said it what government needs to do is to adopt this model if you see that a model has worked in one sector Adopt that model in other sectors. The model of completely easing of total control over the telecom sector happened in 2001. And you see what has happened to the telecom sector. Now, why can't we bring that entire, the entirety of that model to the power sector so that the power sector can power economy? If you don't power the manufacturing sector, your economy can never be powered. So you have the, the Genkos, the discourse and the discourse is only the discourse that have been completely liberalized there's a need for government to hands up the gen post and the discourse let private individual and the amendment made by the NAT assembly has given part let private individual make investment in the energy sector once we get the energy sector right i can assure you that even the food we produce in the farm the agricultural products we produce but we can preserve it we can process it and we can we can we we, we can export it if you don't process it will it, 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 it will not in a way so it is processing you need to add additional value to it when you have scaled the value it makes it easier for you to to to, to export to export to, to 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 other to other countries and then you make money from it and it's Make it easier for you to move the goods through the length and breadth of this country. So it's it's not rocket science. It's not it's not rocket science. But if you look at all this money that they are stealing, all this money that they have they've allegedly accused people of stealing from from government, you'll be shaking your head at. If only we have invested this money in the power sector. If only we have invested this money in making sure that we have good transportation system, we have good road network between Nigeria. I can go to Baesa, go to Baesa now. Harvest, um, harvest, harvest, harvest crayfish, and come and sell it. Package it and come and sell it in Lagos, and come and sell it in Lagos. Sell it, sell it in Ogun. Sell it in, sell it in in Ekiti, and the rest, and the rest, and the rest of it. I use the waterway. So it's 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 not rocket science, but is there the political will to do that? Are those going to public office interested in building legacies, or they are interested in building mansions for themselves? Mansions that will not last.
Okay, uh, let's move to the Punch newspaper. I'm, I'm not starting with the leading headline. I'm starting with a smaller headline at the top of uh, Punch newspaper. Customs generate 3 trillion naira, I 5 trillion naira in 2024. It gives me concern. I, I don't know how, how it works anyway, but when customs is uh, eyeing higher revenue every year, they want to get higher and higher revenue. Does that not affect the climate, uh, the business climate of a country? Because things to be cleared at the borders, things to be cleared from the wharf and all that, keep getting higher and higher. And they charge in, in dollars in, in most cases. So is that not a problem for business in Nigeria? Can we thrive with just, that kind of a, a, a just, situation where customs are expected to generate more and more money? It tells you the focus, the direction with which um, government business is being done, that the focus on revenue generation is not about growing the revenue generation from foreign foreign exchange and in true imports into your country. Government is not even trying to look at money that they can generate from export of goods and services outside of the country. So it tells you the focus. When um, your custom is meant to protect your local businesses, and when the focus of that custom, the central focus becomes revenue generation, it tells you what is really wrong with 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 your with your with your economic model of building your economy. It tells you what has been wrong, not with this present administration, but what has been wrong because the focus has been on generating more 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 revenue from from the last the last eight nine years the. The, the, the head of custom always pride themselves at the beginning of the year. They, they usually give us figures, figures um, about what they've generated and on, it keeps increasing yearly. The question you ask is where does this revenue go to? What were these revenue used for? Who validated the claims of what cost? <coughs> should we have even come from custom or should we have come from the accountant general of the federation or should we have come from the minister of finance in a, in a regular briefing? Providing us with a brief, but we have a situation in Nigeria where about every agency, revenue generating agency, works independent of one another, and there is no coordination with respect to. FRS will come; they will give you their own figure. Um, MPA will come; they will give you their own figure. Um, the customer has come now to give you their own, their own figure. The that of NNPC, you don't even know the figure of NNPC. They won't even give you any figure. So you wonder what does Ministry of Finance? What do, what do they do? What does what does what does Ministry of Finance? What does it do with respect to coordinating and ensuring that every money that is generated goes into the national treasury? But was that not but, the, the aim of the single treasury account? But is that is that do you believe that works? All the you, you, do you truly believe that works? You talk about a single treasury account. You saw the, you saw the money for the SIP. And then the, 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 the director, the suspended director said, I moved the money from one account to another account. How many ministries have single treasury? You see, there are so many political statements made under, under Buhari's administration. Uh, there are so many policy statements that were not fully implemented. For a fact, uh, the system exploited them. Um, the... Let me put it um, um, quote unquote the laid back approach of the president in terms of not seem to be interested in interfering once he has appointed you into office, he believes you have the capacity to do whatever you want to do. And it was a free it was a free for all approach under that particular administration that everybody just exploited that loophole without any chain of command and structure in the presidency with respect to overseeing what was going on. The Minister of Finance, uh, as far as I'm concerned, EFCC is bothering. Um, what EFCC should have done is to have invited the Minister of Finance and told them to come and account for some of the things. We are not seeing them publish it on the pages of newspaper and do media trial. But those that have mismanaged the common wealth of this nation should be held accountable. If you have made the Minister of Finance, for example, in this present administration, you have the Minister of Finance and the coordinating as we made the coordinating Minister of the Economy. I hope uh, Mr. Wali Edun will live to that. We we'll could beyond the coordination. What we have lacked is coordination. 
an organization of how resources are, are sourced, are generated, and how these resources are, 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 are kept, and how these resources are disbursed. All right, um, that's how we have to wrap it up on this segment. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Johnson. Thank you for reviewing the papers with us this morning. It is a pleasure to start this, the first Friday of the year, yes. listening to your beautiful voice and the baritone <laughs> voice of a young girl. So it's going to be a wonderful weekend. Thank you so Thank much. You very much. Thank you. Have a wonderful Thank day. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to that bad day because I want to eat that cake. The cake was good. <laughs> no problem. No problem. We got you covered. <laughs> All right. We've been speaking to Mr. Dide Johnson. He's the chief lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism and he was joining us here in Lagos State. We'll go on a short break and when we return, we'll be looking at our hot topic. Please stay with us.